starting in 2010, students in year three have been required to recall all the addition and subtraction facts and the simpler multiplication facts and related division facts, the twos, threes, fives, and tens. So we've been doing it for 12 years. I don't see any problems with students knowing the number facts, having memorized the number facts, being able to recall the number facts. We can fiddle with the language, but those key processes should be in the curriculum. It wasn't that difficult and it is that useful. Seriously, this is ridiculous. G'day teachers, I'm Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. This video is a review of the Year 3 Consultative Curriculum for Mathematics proposed for 2022. So looking at an overview of the content descriptors, you can see there's not a lot of changes. That's the same across all year levels. There are, there's some movement of content descriptors. There's a lot of rearranging and it's been simplified, which I think is a good thing. The biggest change I see in the year three proposed curriculum is the raised importance of computation and problem solving, both of which I think are very important and probably didn't have enough emphasis last time. So I'm pleased with that. The biggest gap with an exclamation point is number fact recall. And the summary statement about the, the overview of the curriculum proposed for Year 3, they've removed telling time for one minute. No one is required to learn that, which I think is a bit strange. Telling time to one minute is very often very useful. If you're going to catch a bus or a train, for example, or an airplane, you'll want to know the minutes as well as the rest of the time uh, measurement. And the content descriptors in statistics have been expanded as they have in many, many year levels. So we're looking at the first number content descriptor for year three, and we can see that the text has been expanded a lot. There's a lot of blue text here on the screen. The basic content descriptor hasn't been changed, represent and order numbers to at least 10,000. It included recognize and model. Those verbs have been changed but they're still implied in what is in the new content descriptor. So we have represent, read, write, rename, and order. Natural numbers, the word natural has been included. Natural numbers are positive whole numbers. So that's a mathematical term that's been inserted for clarification. And then we have using naming and writing conventions for larger numbers and relate these representations to place value in the base 10 number system. One thing that I've really appreciated in the new proposed curriculum is the mentions of place value. Starting, starting in year one, place value was mentioned, it's mentioned again more strongly in uh, year two, and again we see it here in year three. I think this is very important, and for some reason the previous uh, curriculum omitted mention of the place value specifically. So let's move on. Number two. There's little to say here. This has been this is one of the very few content descriptors that have not been changed at all. All the words are, are appearing in the new version, so everybody must have agreed this was a good one. Looking at the third content descriptor, there's quite a lot that's changed here. There's nothing that's been crossed out, so the content is still here, but it's been reworded. Um, the old one said represent money values in multiple ways and count the change required for simple transactions to the nearest five cents. So obviously the content here is um, using money for transactions. The new one talks about rounding natural numbers to the nearest multiple of five or ten. So it specifies the skill of rounding to the nearest five or ten to make estimates for financial transactions and to solve other practical problems. So this includes financial transactions, but also other practical problems where rounding is important. Let's keep going. The fourth number content descriptor um, is about modeling and representing unit fractions. Recognize and use different models to represent the unit fractions. That's a nice expansion in the language. And their multiples, that, that's a good thing. Combine fractions with the same denominator to complete the whole using part whole understanding. Again, there's more detail. This is a good thing. The content descriptor has been improved. Looking at the fifth number content descriptor, there is no equivalent in the old curriculum. So this is brand new content. So let's see what it says. 
model situations and solve problems. This is an example of a content descriptor where solving problems has been explicitly stated, including representing money in different ways, involving addition and subtraction of two and three digit numbers, applying number of partitioning, place value and basic facts, explain results in terms of the situation. This is fantastic. I really like this content descriptor. It's got lots and lots of detail. It specifies the numbers that we're going to use. It gives lots of verbs to explain the, the processes that children, students will be going through. And it expands, just expands the detail enormously. It gives teachers a lot to work with in terms of planning learning activities. And I thoroughly commend the curriculum writers for um, what they've done in putting this one together. The sixth number content descriptor, all of the content is still there in the new one, although it's been rearranged a lot, except for mental strategies. I'm not quite sure why mental strategies have been left out, but the new content descriptor has a lot, as I said, has a lot of detail. It has model situations, including financial contexts, solve problems involving multiplication, Division's been added, that's a good thing. Using diagrams, equal groups and arrays, that tells you how they're going to be represented and modeled, that's good. Represent the situation as a number sentence, that's good. So all of this has been added and solve using digital tools where appropriate, explain the results in terms of the situation. A very nice expansion of the content descriptor here. The only thing that's missing is, is mental strategies. So it had using efficient mental and written strategies. Now the, the mental strategies have been removed. I think mental strategies are important. They're part of memorizing number facts. And as I'm going to say, that's been left out of this um, proposed curriculum. And I've got some feelings about that. So I think that maybe leaving out the mental strategies is part of this push away from memorization of number facts. If so, I think we should put mental strategies back in and um, we should stop playing around with mental strategies, basically. Stop fiddling with it. Stop downplaying mental strategies and memorization of number facts and just include it as part of what children are learning and the ways in which they are learning it. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to come back to that. So we're moving on to algebra. These codes start with 3A. And the first one, of course, will be 0, 1. Again, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of um, expansion of the language. There's a little bit that's been removed. In the old curriculum, we had describe, continue, and create number patterns resulting from performing addition and subtraction. The new one has identify, continue, and create extended number se sequences formed by doubling and halving using technology to assist where appropriate identify and describe emerging patterns. Again, I like what's here. I like the expansion of the language. Um, I don't really mind that addition and subtraction have been left out of the descriptor, although I don't quite understand why. But I'm a little bothered by the fact that it's been specified that this is doubling and halving, and that's it. We're talking about patterns in numbers, patterns in, well, it's part of algebra, looking at sequences of numbers and patterns in sequences and so on, the writers have specified doubling and halving using de technology to assist where appropriate. I don't see why it should be only doubling and halving. I'm all for expanding the range of processes that we're using and adding, I talk about verbs a lot. There's a lot more verbs in the new curriculum. That's a good thing. Why restrict it by saying only doubling and halving? It sounds a little bit nitpicky and I don't understand why it's there anyway. The second algebra content descriptor has basically kept all the content from the old curriculum or existing current curriculum and has expanded it. So we have recognized and explained the connection between addition and subtraction and then this, this ed added language as inverse operations. That's good and apply to partition numbers when generating equivalent number sentences. This is all good. There's lots of, as I said, lots of things teachers can um, gather out of that when proposing and putting together 
lessons and activities. The third content descriptor for algebra, here we go. We've got to deal with the recall of addition facts for single digit numbers. It looks like not much has changed. There's only the word recall that's been crossed out and increasingly has been crossed out. It looks as though we're still doing pretty much the same thing, but that impression is deceptive. The word recall has been left out, meaning that year three students no longer are required to recall addition facts and related subtraction facts. What is here is recognize and explain patterns in basic addition facts up to 10 plus 10 and related subtraction facts. Extend, and there's something missing here, extend, apply these patterns, should be extend and apply these patterns, I think, to develop efficient mental strategies for computation with larger numbers. Students are being asked to recognize and explain patterns. Presumably we are allowed to explore patterns we can find patterns, we can discover patterns in basic addition facts up to 10 plus 10. Here's a point you could have stopped at 9, but anyway, up to 10 plus 10 and related subtraction facts. We're looking at patterns, we're investigating patterns, we're looking at patterns, we're explaining patterns. And then we've got to extend and apply these patterns to develop efficient mental strategies. It's almost memorization for computation with larger numbers. It sounds pretty good, except no one's being asked to memorize anything. So no one's being asked to recall anything. There's no recalling of number facts. We're exploring patterns. We're applying patterns. We're developing efficient mental strategies. These are all good things, but no recall and no memorization. Here's my view. We're not, I'm not proposing that anybody go back to rote learning. Far from it. We should be exploring patterns. We should be teaching children about the patterns that exist in the addition facts and the subtraction facts. We should develop mental strategies. I talk a lot about this in lots and lots of my videos. We've got a whole resource called uh, Blitzit Maths Radar Books that incorporate dozens and dozens of strategies for students to become familiar with number facts. But then we go beyond that and say, now you need to learn them. You need to learn them off by heart. You need to memorize the number facts for efficiency, for just for to serve the purpose of learning further maths, more difficult maths, more important maths later on. And year three is the year when this used to happen and it's appropriate. I believe year threes can cope with this. They should be memorizing number facts. So here's my top recommendation for the year three curriculum for goodness sake curriculum writers please put back in recall of number facts we can do everything else you've got here we can expand the language the way you have i love all the things that you've done here except for one thing and that you've removed recall of number facts if you'd put that back in everybody would be much better off all the year three students and all the year three teachers especially all right, let's keep going. We're going to look at um, the next content description. This again has got the word recall crossed out. We used to have recall multiplication facts of 2, 3, 5, and 10 and related division facts. And then investigate conditions. This is all about odd and even numbers. In the new proposed curriculum, we have describe, follow, and create algorithms involving a sequence of steps and decisions to investigate numbers, including odd and even, so there they are again. And multiples of 2, 3, 5, and 10. Way! Multiples of 2, 3, 5, and 10 using computational thinking to recognize, describe, and explain emerging patterns. This is rubbish. I... I... <laughs> Again, I like all the content. I like everything that's there. We, we're going to be describing, following, creating algorithms, looking at sequences of steps. We're investigating numbers, including odd and even, which I think is a very minor point. And the multiples of 2, 3, 5, and 10. Fantastic. Use computational thinking. Yes, please. To recognize, describe, and explain emerging patterns. Yes, that's all good. Where's the recall of number facts? Why, oh, why, oh, why, curriculum writers, have you got rid of recall of multiplication facts? 
It wasn't that difficult and it is that useful. Seriously, this is ridiculous. I'm sorry for getting emotional. I'm sorry if I've, I've upset anybody watching this video, but this is wrong. We should not get rid of recall of basic multiplication facts. And when we get to year four, I'll say it again, year four should be memorizing the rest of the multiplication facts up to nine. It's not that far. And all the rest of it is great. So we explore, we investigate, we find patterns, we develop strategies, we develop computational thinking, we find shortcuts for doing things, and we expect students to recall number facts. That's what it should say. It used to say that for the last 10 to 12, what is it? it, must be 12 years. Starting in 2010, students in year three have been required to recall all the addition and subtraction facts and the simpler multiplication facts and related division facts, the twos, threes, fives, and tens. So we've been doing it for 12 years. I don't see any problems with students knowing the number facts, having memorized the number facts, being able to recall the number facts. We can fiddle with the language, but those key processes should be in the curriculum. This is a mathematics curriculum. Beyond this, students are going to have to tackle bigger numbers and smaller numbers, digital fractions, common fractions, any number of mathematical topics, all of which will be easier to do if the students can memorize the number facts. This is so important and it's so frustrating to see somebody come in here and interfere with the content that was perfectly acceptable, perfectly useful. We could add the language. I love that. I've said it before. I love the extra language, but don't play around with number facts and say, oh, by the way, we think you shouldn't be learning to memorize number facts. Let me deal with this right now because this is probably the best place to put it. I think the reason for this is somebody with an academic background has decided, and it's not just one person, of course, it's a sort of a movement in the maths education field. Academics have said memorization of number facts is not necessary if students can explore the numbers, explore the patterns, find the patterns, describe the patterns, explain the patterns. And if they can do all of those things, they will have a far deeper, greater knowledge of numbers and how they're put together and how they relate to each other so that no one needs to memorize number facts. That all sounds great from a theoretical point standpoint, from an academic standpoint, maybe. I used to be an academic. I was a classroom teacher for 16 years. I went to university, did two postgrad de degrees, lectured at university level to pre-service teachers for another 16 years, and then went back to a little bit of classroom teaching. So I do know what I'm talking about from both perspectives, from the classroom pr practitioner perspective and also from the academic perspective. I know where the academics have come from. I understand the idea of, of developing deeper understanding of mathematics and really helping our students to improve the knowledge they have of, of the concepts in maths and so on. I think that's what's happened. Academics have got in here and said, no, no, no. Memorization of number facts is I could ridicule it and call it old school, old fashioned and all that sort of thing. But it's not just that. It's that it's not necessary if the students develop a good knowledge of number. I would argue that's wrong. It's muddle headed and the students still need to memorize number facts. And that is part of knowing their number facts and understanding number and understanding the patterns that are found in number. I've said enough on this, I've said more than enough probably, but this is the biggest hurdle that I see in the proposed curriculum mathematics for year three. Now that I've got that off my chest, let's have a look at measurement. So these content descriptors have the code 3M on the end and this will be 01, the first content descriptor. This you can see the language, the, the text is in black which means it's all the same except for one little part on the end to solve practical problems. So we're talking about measuring, ordering, comparing objects in terms of length, mass, and capacity to solve practical problems. That's good. I have no problem with saying, let's make the problems practical. Um, that's it, nothing more to say. 
The second measurement content descriptor is completely new. So there's no old existing parallel, as it were. Let's see what it says. Recognize which metric units are used to measure everyday items and use known measures and related units as a benchmark to make, improve, and check the reasonable of estimates. This is very good. So we're exploring metric units, which ones are used for everyday items, use known measures as a benchmark, and we can make, improve, and check the reasonableness of estimates. Again, lots of nice verbs there. Love it. Number three. Units of time. The old one said tell time to the minute and that's been crossed out. It's completely eliminated. This is another example where I don't understand why it's been taken out and we had investigate the relationship between units of time. The new one says communicate estimates and measures of duration. This is all good. Using formal units. Good. Including days, hours, minutes and seconds. All good. Like it. The content's nice and clear and specific but there's no telling the time. I don't get this. Telling the time has been moved to year two. It used to start in year one. That was removed. Now it's all in year two. And telling time to the minute has gone from year three. I think telling time to the minute is important. It's a useful skill. It's an important skill. If you're going to catch a bus or a plane or um, a train or something, you're going to need to know the time to the minute in everyday contexts and, you know, practical problems involving time include that idea. I don't know why that's gone. My recommendation, put it back in, telling time to the minute. Now we're going to move on to space. We didn't have it as um, a strand called space. It was part of measurement and geometry with an MG code. Now it's changed to an SP. This is one of the two places where the code has two letters to stand for the strand. And that's because we have space and later statistics, both starting, of course, with S. So this is year three, space. The first content descriptor used to say make models of three-dimensional objects and describe key features. The new one has expanded language, analyze, classify, and make models of objects, identifying key features and explaining why these features make them suited to their uses. That's all good. The only thing here that I'm have a slight niggle about is taking out the phrase three-dimensional, the adjective three-dimensional. They've done that through the curriculum, through the maths curriculum. All mentions of two-dimensional shapes have been changed, so it now just says shapes. And all mentions of three-dimensional objects have been reduced to just the word objects. I think that's a mistake. It doesn't matter so much in this example because of the content the students are looking at. Um, but in other places, I think it's helpful. It clarifies what we're doing if you do, in fact, include two-dimensional and three-dimensional. The second content descriptor for space, it used to have um, create and interpret simple grid maps to show position and pathways. So this is a mapping content descriptor. The new one says create, use and interpret models of familiar environments. So that's interesting because it might not be a map. It might be a model using, I don't know, toy blocks and cars and things like that. I can imagine children having fun doing that. Positioning representations of key landmarks and objects relative to each other. The thing that's gone is mapping. Now, it just strikes me as I'm saying this, maybe mapping has been moved to geography. It's always been a little bit uh, how do we say, a little bit of a question, might even be controversial in some circles, as to whether maps belong in map, sorry, whether maps belong in maths, mathematics, or they belong in geography. I will have to look that up and see whether um, this is actually now still in the curriculum, but it's in the geography curriculum. Anyway, I'm, I basically like the content descriptor. The third space content descriptor, it used to say identify symmetry in the environment, one of the shorter content descriptors. The new one has identify line symmetry in the environment. That's useful. There are two different sorts of symmetry, basically. There's line symmetry and rotational symmetry. At least at, at this level, there's two. So the writers are specifying it's only line symmetry. And then we've added 
using terms such as vertical, horizontal, and diagonal to describe the line, so that's all useful. The next content descriptor is actually out of measurement. I've included it here because that's the way it was presented in the um, proposed curriculum documentation. This used to be part of geometry, now it's part of measurement. That's an interesting change. I don't think it matters too much because we're still learning the content. Anyway, the old one was identify angles as measures of turn and compare angle sizes in everyday situations. I actually thought that was too broad because angles is a very broad term and it includes lots and lots of different sizes. This new one is improved. It says identify angles as measures of turn such as right angle, quarter turn, and compare angle sizes in every, everyday situations. So that's good, I think, including a right angle as uh, an example. I seriously think it might be the only example in, at year three level, but anyway, we'll leave it at that. Um, and the only other thing to comment on is that this is now a measurement topic, not a geometry topic. That's interesting. Angles are a part of geometry, but the focus here, I guess, is on measuring, turning. And so measuring angles is now a thing in year three. So that's a good thing, I think. Let's move on. We're going to move on to probability. There's just the one probability content descriptor. This, of course, has a code that has 3P in it. And we used to have conduct chance experiments, identify and describe possible outcomes, and recognize variation in results. The new one, we have conduct chance experiments again. Involving repetitions of an activity, ex experiment, or game. This is all new. List and describe the set of all possible outcomes. Recognizing and recording variation in results and using digital tools as appropriate. There's lots of expansion of the language. It's really helpful to ex have some more detail about what is expected in terms of chance experiments. I like all of this. My only quibble is using digital tools as appropriate. I don't know why the content the uh, curriculum writers have inserted that in some places and not others. I think if we're going to use digital tools as appropriate, you can let the teachers decide when it's appropriate. And so I'm a little leery of curriculum writers saying, oh yes, and by the way, on this one, you have to use digital tools. I think a teacher can decide to use digital tools at other times where it's not specified because they're a professional because they're creating their own classroom curriculum documentation. They're creating their own lessons and activities. And if they choose to include digital tools, I would say we should trust the teachers to get that right, that that's a benefit for the learning of the students. So I'd rather that wasn't in there. There we go, that's my thought. Statistics, we're at the final three content descriptors. Looking at the first one, it used to be about collecting data and organizing and creating displays, including lists, tables, picture graphs, simple column graphs, and it used to say with and without the use of digital technology. So we'll come to that. The new one has acquire categorical or discrete numerical data. So that's expanded on the sort of data that's being collected and then how it's being collected by observing, collecting and accessing existing data sets. And then in terms of recording and representing it, we have appropriate methods, including frequency tables and spreadsheets, that's all new, and use total frequencies to compare data. So this has been thoroughly changed. The language is the same even where it implies the same sort of content. Ignore, uh, organizing into categories has been taken out, not quite sure why that was. With and without the use of digital technologies has suddenly disappeared. So it's, it's interesting. What I think happened in terms of uh, statistics is someone was given the job to beef up what was in the old curriculum and expand on the um, information that was provided to teachers to help them do their job better. And as a result, we've got thoroughly rewritten um, descriptors of what the students are learning. Let's look at the second one. We used to have interpret and compare data displays, and that's it. The new one says interpret and compare various displays using software to construct graphs where appropriate, interpret, describe, and explain them in the context they represent. That's very good. 
It does say using software to construct graphs where appropriate. That is appropriate here because there's a whole category of tools that teachers can use to help teach students about graphing and they use software to draw the graph. So th that I actually like, and, uh, despite what I said earlier about digital tools. The very last content descriptor it used to have identified questions or issues for categorical, ver categorical variables. Identify data sources and plan methods of data collection and recording. Most of that's been crossed out. It's not there any longer. Instead, we've got new language in blue. Use the statistical investigation process. That's about data sources and how to collect data, of course. To conduct guided statistical investigations involving the collection of categorical or discrete numerical data with respect to context and problems of interest. This is much improved. It's better language. It includes more verbs, more guidance for teachers. And I approve. Not that anybody needs my approval, but that this is a personal response. So that's what I think. So we're at the end of the year three curriculum, the proposed year three curriculum for 2022. Currently in review, ACARA, the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority, who writes our curriculums in Australia, is asking for feedback, and specifically from teachers and principals, as well as parents, educational specialists, and members of the community. So anybody watching this video with a, um, an opinion about how maths is taught in Australia, you are welcome. You are invited by ACARA to make a submission to put your comments. I'll put some links below this video so you can um, click those easily to find where you can add feedback. You can even send them an email, which I like because there's a lot of things that I want to say. I'm going to put it all into a gigantic email. Or maybe I'll write several emails, I don't know. You can see that on some matters I've got some very critical things to say. I've been, I think it's fair to say, scathing in my criticism of removing recall of number facts. And I've been generous, I hope, in my comments in commending the curriculum writers for all the many, 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 many improvements that they have made. By and large, I like this curriculum. I like the extra detail that's there. I like the clarification that's been added. I like the fact that some idiosyncratic things have been removed. All of those are good things. The big beef that I have with the new curriculum is twofold. One is removing content that used to be there that would be useful, like telling the time. I don't know why that's been restricted to year two. It just seems weird to me that someone would say that's a good idea. But the other thing is my second beef, the more serious one, is not asking students, not requiring students to recall number facts. And as I've said in a couple of places now, that's a grave mistake in my view. I'm interested to see the comments that I've received from teachers on my, uh, my previous video have confirmed that at least some teachers agree with me about removing number facts. I'd love to hear what you think. Please speak up if you disagree with me or if you agree with me, please add a comment to this video. It will encourage me to know if I'm on the right track as much as anything and also support this uh, channel. Do leave a like or a dislike as, uh, as you feel so inclined to this video. Click the subscribe link if you are interested to receive notification of further videos on these topics. And as I said, leave a comment, leave a comment if you wish to. That's it for this video. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing what I have to say. I look forward to talking to you in the next video, which will be a review of the Year 4 Consultative Curriculum for Mathematics. That's it for now. I'll see you soon.